People who can't say no. What is the worst thing you ended up doing for someone? I sang two sets of songs at a crowded restaurant while my struggling artist friend played guitar and backed me up. He begged me to do it, and I figured when he heard how terrible I sounded at our rehearsal he would let me back out. But no. The looks on the faces of the patrons, somewhere between sympathy and dumbfoundedness, will haunt me until I die. Why did you do more than one song lol? My aunt is getting divorced from her doucher bag husband of 15 years. She still does his laundry because she can't say no. The divorce finalizes this January, but has been in progress for about 8 months. No idea how she manages to actually be the one to initiate a divorce, but can't tell him to frick off about his stained tighty whities If I were your aunt I would fold the clothes without cleaning them. My boss was like do you want to stay extra tonight so I said yeah, and then a different boss said do you want to cover the morning shift too, so I said yes, and then they I was asked if I wanted to cover the evening shift as well so I said yes, and this is how I was once a bartender for 34 hours straight. I'm sorry for laughing at this, but what the heck, I bet you were dying. Building a deck, moving furniture, and laying new trim for a girl I worked with. It took 3 days, she only had me do it so she could sell the house for more money, and she paid me with a half empty bottle of birthday cake flavored vodka. Addendum, she was married at the time. I once ended up hosting a bible study at my house, I don't even go to church. I do whatever pleases Jesus. I was living in a not great part of town, smoking a cigarette on my front porch, when a shady looking guy asked me for a ride to the corner store, which I'm pretty sure was also a drug den. I was nice, and naive, so I said okay and drove the guy to the store. When we got there, he asked me to wait, which I was uncomfortable with, but thus guy knew where I lived, so I didn't want to pee him off since he seemed a bit unstable. After a few minutes, he came back out with another person and I was told to drive to another place. So I drove to the other place, pulled into the driveway of a dilapidated house, and he told me to turn off my headlights. Then, the two of them started talking quietly to each other, and I heard the second person say something along the lines of, just let him go home, man. He did what you wanted him to. Then they got out of the car and the first guy told me to leave but not to put my headlights on until I was back on the main road. I did, and made it home okay. I'm honestly surprised I made it out of that alive. My house was only a block away, and that was the last I ever saw of either of them. I have since learned to say no to shady characters. Well, it was the worst thing I did for myself. Actually, I've always hated sweet potatoes with a passion, but I was riding a bus one day here in South Korea and this Korean lady sitting next to me offered me some sweet potato. Not wanting to be rude, I accepted. Worst case scenario, I figured I'll have to choke down a bite of sweet potato or something. I'm a grown man, I can handle that. This lady proceeds to pull an entire sweet potato out of her purse, still hot and steaming, and offers it to me. She pulled out another one for herself and starts chowing down. So now I'm stuck on this bus next to her for 2 1 stroke 2 hours with a fresh sweet potato in my hands. I swallowed my pride and ate that entire thing. Even thanked her and told her it was delicious. Ugh. I'm getting nauseous just recalling that day. I'm gonna go lie down now. There's something sweet about the fact that she had brought an extra along for a stranger though. Not me but my parents. We have lots of relatives in Europe my dad had a lot of brothers and sisters, but he's lived in North America since his early 20s. Random relatives, like a niece's daughter who he's never met, will get in touch, saying they are coming to Canada for a month. My parents will pick them up at the airport two hours away, let them stay for a month while they feed them and give them tours of the area, and then the person goes back home. This happens about once every two years with some new distant family member looking for a free vacation in Canada. All they need is airfare. It's a huge strain on my parents who are elderly, but they just can't seem to shut it down. If it was relatives they actually know whose company they enjoy. No problem, but geez. One time it was a niece whom they'd met once when she was a child, her husband and their two unruly, rude children, 
I would not dream of flying to Europe and imposing myself on strangers for a month, but apparently it's just expected that you roll out the welcome mat for anyone you're remotely related to. All I know is, if these people contact me with an announcement that they're coming to visit, I'm going to give them a list of hotels in the area and wish them a nice holiday. Man, the exact same thing happened to my parents when they bought a house on the beach in Florida. Suddenly all the relatives we hadn't seen in a decade acted like they were close family. It sucks how many people are fake and shady as heck. When I was 16 my girlfriend's brother bike was stolen from their front porch. So we search the area in my car and see two guys riding the bike. So we pull over yell at them to give the bike back. They then ask for a ride home. And I did. That was pretty awkward lol. I bought my father a cabin with the agreement he would make monthly payments on it. We had it all laid out and I was happy to help him fill a dream. After 6 months and lots of arguments I realized he was never going to pay me anything so I began the process of getting the house back. After a lot of time passes and he has remodeled most of the house, he offers to sell it back to me at a 150% markup saying I could resell it. He made it sound like I was crushing his dreams. I gave him a property I had that was worth $5k and an additional $5k for remodel to the house and we agreed. Keep in mind I am out what I paid for the house in the first place. He has gained $10k in assets and a home for free for 2 years. Turned out he has tried to sell the property and nobody wanted it. He was selling it for 300% what I paid. Under my nose. He lied to me and took advantage of me. Here I am 4 years later. 6 years after buying it. And I still can't sell it. My mother lives nearby the house so I asked her to help me sell it show it and I would give her 15% sell price. I live 1500 miles away. Turns out she had not been trying to sell it but rather she was living in it and lying. I found out earlier this month. My teenage sister posted a selfie and I could see the bedroom in her reflection behind her. I called my mother immediately and told her to get out. She is refusing to send me my keys and I currently have no way to get to Texas to take care of this. She has also cut off contact between my sister and me. Jesus, the parents have become the children. I couldn't say no to a friend who asked me to go on a bus trip to New York's Radio City Music Hall as a chaperone for a group of middle school students. They couldn't get enough parents to volunteer. The trip was a disaster as the bus broke down just outside Manhattan. It poured rain, and two of the kids had stomach sickness from riding the bus and nowhere to use a bathroom with the broken. Down bus pulled over on the shoulder of a busy expressway. The scourge of the pickup truck owner is that everyone you know thinks you bought it to help them move one day. I bought a trailer to tow behind my truck now when people ask to borrow the truck I just drop the trailer off to them and tell them good luck. Crappy thing was I just moved and guess how many of those mother suckers offered to help me. None. I was home during college for the summers. A middle school friend suddenly called me up after going through 6 people to track down my number. He needed a place to stay for the weekend. Back then, I just couldn't say no so I said yes. House wasn't that big. Four other people excluding me were already living in it. And then he comes. I notice within seconds that this guy has changed a lot. And for the worse, it turns out he's stinking. Tells me he's been on the road since a couple of weeks. He's having some issues with his girlfriend. And he's talking about weird things. He wasn't even on drugs or anything. Anyway, he stays on way past the weekend. I'm wondering if he'll ever leave. Nope, not happening. Everyone in the house is a little freaked out because he has no basic manners or consideration for anyone. Too many incidents to state now. One of them is that my mom caught him eavesdropping outside my parents' bedroom door at 2am. To cut it short, I had to make a plan with my friends and leave the city, making sure he knows that he won't be able to accompany me. I figured he'd have little shame and leave knowing that I'm not there anymore. Thankfully, it worked. The next day he was out. That was one risky butt bet. Not me, but my brother. When we were young we were at a strip club and when it came time to leave, one of the strippers asked us for a ride home. My brother, who can't say no to this day, accepted. As it turns out, she lived almost two hours away. As it turns out, when he pulled in front of her house, she decided to thank him with a BJ. Right there and then, 
How do I know this? I had to watch from the back seat while my brother got a BJ from a stripper. Yeah, that's the worst thing he did to me. Because he can't say no. A lot of moving. It's rough owning a pickup. A 30 mark essay for a person I'd met that day. Saying yes to an arranged marriage. What an epic frick up. Let my co-worker move in with me now I have this messy be all in my house fricking stuff up letting her dog pee everywhere and smoking in her bedroom. Back in my substance using days I was fairly generous. I know how awful Greek sickness is so I would often spot my using friends small amounts so they could go to work or something. I ended up quitting H for almost 3 years when an old acquaintance messaged me saying he finally had my money. It worked out to be about $60 and I was like frick ya yeah, I'll buy some beers. When I finally got over to his place he had a slew of pills out and said I could take what I wanted. Needless to say I got addicted again because saying no to free drugs is incredibly hard. I had a physical relationship. I did not violate anyone. I had just gone out with this pathetic dude. Not in a mean way but he just tried really hard and couldn't quite make it. I've always loved the underdog, rebels, reject type people so it made sense. I had no intention of fricking him. But we went out and he tried very hard to make me happy and our date was a disaster. I felt bad for him because I didn't even know it was a date and he dressed up in a tie and I was in jeans and a t-shirt. A la new girl. He listened to everything I said with passion and really was a nice date. I just wasn't into him like that. Well we go back to his place and I let him down gently. He burst into tears asking what was wrong with him. Calling himself stupid for not getting my hints. ETC etc. I felt so bad and I hugged him. He cried into my chest and said he'd never lose his virginity. And I just did it. I told him I was going to but we weren't dating. I did it out of pity. All because I couldn't say no to going out and no to going back to his place. It ends well though. We still talk and he was a gentleman. I try to get him dates with girls and he is always there for me to talk to. I guess I could try an open relationship. I couldn't break up with this annoying clingy girl Janice so I told her my work was relocating me to Yemen. Then I actually flew to Yemen. 15 Yemen Road, Yemen. Lending my friend my Xbox One for a weekend when Halo 5 just came out. He was an butthole friend and since the game doesn't have split screen it's not like I could play too. Why? Not sure if this is the worst, but I stopped at a gas station on my way to Pittsburgh and a hitchhiker asked me for a ride. The girl I was bringing with me had also gotten out of the car to go to the bathroom and came back to a random hippie looking guy in the back seat. I started driving and a mile or two down the road he realized I went the wrong way he wanted to go. So I dropped him off at the exit just so he could walk back to the gas station. I paid for Winra. Companies will work you to death if you can't say number. Conversely, it is shocking how morally outraged people become when you say no to them. The morality of, not everyone, but many people is driven by getting what they want and you are in their mind a bad person for not giving it to them. Like this video and this good abby will play you a nice song. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.